All right, so people settle. And one of my biggest challenges as a real estate trainer and coach is that we settle for good when great is still an option. And, and yet I've found myself doing this more than one time in my life. So what's up, everybody? I'm John Dietz, real estate trainer, coach, and team builder. And if you want to reach out to me, my contact information is below. There's also a contact uh, calendar link down there. Hit that calendar link and get on my calendar. So I'm going to tell you a story. It's 2002. And I get my real estate license uh, pretty much because my wife thought it would be a good idea. Uh, I didn't actually want to be a realtor, but my wife was... Uh, smarter than me, and she still is. <laughs> and she could see that I wasn't really happy doing the job that I was doing at the time, even though I was doing good and I was making really good money at that time. I mean, the year's 2002. Um, I'm making over $200,000 a year in the product fundraising business. And life is good. Colin is six years old, Lacey is six months old, we have a new home, and life is good, except for one thing, I'm not happy. And she said, you need to get your real estate license. And my response was, heck no, I don't want to be a realtor. Well, she won. Um, she still does, by the way. And for all of you guys out there, uh, when your wife tells you to do something, just do it. Uh, remember, she's smarter than you are. All right, so I get my license. And I'm dual career. I'm still in the product fundraising business. I'm selling real estate part-time and I had sold one home in my first six months, crushing it, right? And the owner of the company that I was working for in, in my corporate position uh, reached out to me and, and he said, we've decided, we being the partnership that owned the company, which I was one of the partners, by the way, but we minus me, decided that they didn't like the fact that I was selling real estate part-time, wanted me to quit. And if I didn't, they were going to fire me. So, okay, let me think about that. So I go home, I get an email uh, and I'm working at Keller Williams at the time. And I get an email from Gary Keller and I'm thinking, holy cow, I got an email from Gary Keller, uh, not realizing it, that it went out to everybody in the company. Okay. So the email is telling a story about a man who was climbing a mountain in the middle of the night and why you would do that. I have no idea, but it, it's part of the story. So let's go with it. Now the man falls and he's got a rope tied around him. So it saves his life. And he's hanging on to this rope. He's hanging on out of fear. Now remember that because it's an important part of the story. And he cries out for help 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 and the voice comes back let go of the rope hmm. he responds i'm not going to let go of the rope if i let go of the rope i'm going to die so he's hanging onto this rope out of fear now the next morning a group of hikers come along and they find him still hanging onto the rope three feet from the ground and he's dead he had froze to death in the middle of the night and the caption underneath this story is what are the ropes that you're hanging on to out of fear? And, and I thought, holy cow, it's a divine message. You know, that job with that corporate company was my rope. And I was hanging on to it out of fear. In other words, I almost chose to give up on my real estate career because the position I had with this company um, that I was working for was safe. And it wasn't only safe, I was making good money except I wasn't happy. I was willing to be unhappy paying for the safety and the pleasure of security. And I almost let, almost let go of my future as a real estate agent because that was safe. Real estate wasn't. It caused fear. Anytime you're facing change, you're going to be faced with fear. If you're not feeling fear in the face of change, then you're not thinking big enough. So it's a good thing if you're feeling fear. So I decided, okay, uh, that's fine. You can fire me. And he did. Now, I walked into the team's leader, team leader's office the next day, and I said, I need you to show me how I can replace that income. Now, he pulled out the millionaire real estate agent. Got a copy here close by. Um, if this isn't on your reading list, please put it on your reading list. And he went to the economic model. And he said, all right, John, here it is. This is what you have to do to replace that income. I thought, cool, I could do that. 
So I plugged in and just followed the model. All right. It was daily activities, which, which is what I teach and train on today. And six months later, I had sold over 60 homes. I went from one home sold in my first six months to 60 in the next six months. And I went on to sell over 100 homes a year. And life is good. Except five years later, I start feeling like the same way I did in 2002. In other words, this is good. I'm making good money. But there's something missing. And, and at the time, I was working for a team. And life was good. And the team was awesome. And I'm super grateful for that. But what I wanted was to build my own team. And yet it caused fear. And the rope that I was hanging on to out of fear at that time was this team that I was a part of. And in order to be able to get to better, I was going to have to let go of that rope, take a leap of faith and build my own team, which we did. And that team went on to be very successful. We're selling 120, 130 homes a year, doing really well. Except around 2015, I started to feel that same level of something's missing. There's got to be more. I can settle for what I'm currently doing, and it's good. And I'm making good money, or I can take a leap of faith and do what's next. And what's next for me at the time was to become a team leader for a Killer Williams Market Center in South Florida. I went from high six figures to less than $100,000 a year based on I have a vision, I'm passionate, and I'm going to build this market center to be one of the top market centers in the country. It's going to be a big success. Uh, my passion is training and coaching. This is give me, going to give me an opportunity to do that. And we built that office from 62 agents to 324. And again, I'm doing really well and life is good. Except about six years later, I started feeling like something was missing again. Now, here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do the same thing I'd been doing, except I wanted to do it for me. I wanted to take that final leap of faith that was going to put me in the world of being an entrepreneur, uh, working for me uh, without any safety nets, but also an opportunity to build an organization without any geographic limits and without any ceilings. In other words, the upside is huge. The downside is scary. Now, I hung onto that rope for a long time. In other words, I didn't let go of that rope because I chose safety versus more opportunity until I didn't. And, and finally, the, 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 the deciding factor for me was the birth of my grandson. And we live four and a half hours away. We're moving. We're moving home. And I've got to figure out what's next for me. I looked at all of the different options and I thought, okay, this is safe, this isn't, but this has a bigger upside. And I decided to take that next leap of faith, which was to partner with EXP to work from EXP's platform in order to build an organization that was my organization. Very similar to building a real estate office, except instead of building a real estate office, I was going to build an organization that was my organization, and I would have the opportunity to help other agents do the same thing. It, it, and it was scary. It still is. Now, one year on the path, things are going well. It, not great, but things are going well. And I can see this vision um, becoming reality, right? And I talk to real estate agents every day like you. And I talk to real estate agents who are happy when, when they could be in a better situation, but they're happy in the situation they're in. So they're choosing to settle for their current level of success as a technician renting space in a real estate brokerage that they don't own. They don't have any owner equity in the company. They're not sharing in the revenue and their opportunity for income is limited. It's good, but it's limited. And they're choosing safety over opportunity. They're choosing safety over opportunity because they're comfortable. 
Now, what, what, what it sounds like when I'm talking to them on the phone is, John, I'm happy. Um, I'm not looking to make a change. Right. I get that. However, almost every single time I'm, I'm able to show... I, I'm able to show them that there's a better way. There's a better opportunity. There's a bigger opportunity out there for you. If you would just let go of that rope that you're hanging on to out of fear and take that leap of faith to become an entrepreneur, stop being a technician renting space, working in a silo, build a real estate business that you own that gives you an opportunity to build a bigger business, a business that you own that creates an opportunity for you to earn money even when you're not selling that has an end game, meaning that you don't have to transact real estate for the rest of your life. You can stop trading time for money and start building a business that creates income for you in multiple streams that builds a better life for you, a better life for your family, a better life for your future, if you'll only let go of the rope. Now, if I'm speaking to you as you're hearing me and you something in your soul is telling you there's more, there's better. Uh, I was I was designed to do more than this. God put me here to do more. My, I'm begging you, let go of the rope. Let go of the rope. Reach out to me, 727-686-0404 or coach John Dietz at gmail.com. Dietz, diet with a Z, D-I-E-T-Z, coach John Dietz at gmail.com or send me a text message or hit that calendar link below and get on my calendar. And let's talk about building a business that you own. Let go of the rope. Quit working for other people to make other people rich and start building a business for your family. I'm going to close with this. Every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So when you say yes to that broker, because I love my broker, hmm, are you saying no to your family? Are you saying no to a better life for them because you're saying yes to your broker? When you say yes to safety, are you saying no to a better opportunity? Let go of that rope. There's more, there's better, there's bigger. Reach out to me, John Dietz. Make it a great day.